Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Scum Gogs Kennel. I'm your host, Chris Williams, and have another great show planned for us. But while we wait for people to gather in the chat, let me go off and show you some artwork from my own upcoming graphic novel, I'm Scum Dogs. Okay. Let me go to share screen, and we'll be right off the bat. Here is my extreme 90s cover. Oh, by the way, we're going to be looking at various alien cont contactees tonight and stuff. So get luck ready for that. Here's my uh, Extreme 90s cover. This cover I did to harken back to the comic books of the 90s. It looks pretty good. The graphic novel, my, gra well, my, Scum Dogs is my graphic novel. It's a great looking book, don't you think? It's a parody of cartoons from the 80s and stuff like that. Hmm? Or cartoons from any time I want to parody. Now, you'll see characters that will remind you of characters you were watching when you were a kid back then. So you'll, you're going to love it. Now, uh, Scum Dogs, the actual title characters, they're supervillains that have to take over the world. And it's going to be fun as hell. It's a parody book, a parody and stuff like that. Now, the Scum Dogs are called the Scum Dogs because, well, in the future, there's such a thing known as the Scum Dog Sports, sporting events held with superhuman monsters as the pro athletes. They're called Scum Dogs because they're scum and dogs for trading in their humanity to gain power enough to compete in these sporting events. Well, superpowers. See, you have to... They, trans they transform themselves through magic or through some other means into a superhuman monster, monster, and they do it for money. So you get you get the idea, not the nicest guys around. They transform themselves and you lose their humanity to become superhumanly powerful monsters to compete in these sporting events for fame and fortune. But what happens when they get banned from sports? Well, they get well, they decide to take over the world. Now, on this cover, you'll see ver almost all of my characters that will be appearing in this book. Notably, you'll see the leaders, the stars of my, my graphic novel, Death, Death Mug and Buick Starpoon. Death Mug is the purple guy with the metal mask. He, he's an arrogant dictator who wants to rule the world. He's based on various villains and stuff like that from cartoons and stuff. While he's fighting his arch enemy, Buick Starpoon is basically a G.I. Joe parody, parody, notably of Duke of G.I. Joe, as well as other heroes as well. Now, Death Mug, as you can see, looks like Skeletor from He-Man, as well as the villains of G.I. Joe, the leaders of Cobra. Like, well, like Co Skeletor, he's got, a, he's got a skull face. Like uh, Cobra, you know, like Skeletor from He-Man, he's got a skull face. Like uh, Cobra Commander, he's got a metal mask. And, well, he's also got gold on him, like Serpentor. And he's purple, like the Shredder. While Buick Starpoon, as I said, is a parody of a is a GI Joe parody, but he's also a parody of a of the military type of hero character. You know the no nonsense who won't take any rough from anyone character. But my guy will keep doing taking no nonsense and keep doing what he's doing when he's wrong, and even though it starts destroying everything around him. But he's also a parody of the space opera hero, like uh, you know the kind of heroes like uh, Zap Brannigan, Captain Kirk from Star Trek, oops, or. Uh, Buck Rogers, those kinds of characters. You notice the, and stuff like that. He's, you get the idea. He's not exactly a, uh, an intelligent kind of guy. He just keeps doing what he's doing, even though he's a moron. And, well, both him and Buick Starpoon hate each other's guts, but it's going to be fun. To, it's going to be fun to look at. Now, the other members of, of, uh, of Buick Starpoon's team in the Space Forces are on this cover. This guy over here with the Mohawk, his name is, let me get over here. All right. Uh, yeah, this guy with the mohawk. His name is Roadhog. His he, his military specialty is that he's uh, an army guy. That's his specialty. While this, well, let's get down here. While this bald guy with a gun down here, his name is Beach Pounder. He's a marine. That's his military specialty, a marine. While this guy back here in the red uniform driving that vehicle and stuff like that, firing off his weapons, his name is Blast Tank. His military specialty is that he's a tanker. He drives around that tank and stuff. You get the idea. Now, this covers one of three different variant covers you'll be able to back when my Indiegogo goes live, so you'll also have that to look forward to. Now, I work on my book every day, and when it's done, please go and back it on Indiegogo, okay? Now, let's look at some more art. Here we have Girl Friday, who's uh, the second in command of Buick Starpoon on the Wild Rangers. The Wild Rangers is the name of Buick Starpoon's team in the Space Forces. She was assigned to work under Buick Starpoon because while the Wild Rangers go and fight the scum dogs and save the universe, they're also complete morons whose idea of saving something is basically destroying it. 
So they put Girl Friday on the team to work directly in her Buick Starcoon, and she hates her hates him. She hates her job because she thinks she's basically just a babysitter now. That's Girl Friday. By the way, folks, hit that like button for me because it really helps me fight the algorithm. The more people that see, hit that like button means the more people are watching my con watching my videos and that means my graphic novel scum dogs comes out all the sooner as well as hit that bell hit the part of the bell that gives you all future notifications and please go share this video out on twitter and facebook now we'll look at death mugs henchmen because well you know in all 80s cartoons the main villain of the cartoon would have henchmen and they'd be well idiots all right and these are my idiot my idiot these are my idiots Let's see. The pink guy down here is sloppy, and the blue guy with the top hat, hat with the top hat up here is murder mouth. There are a couple of morons that can't do anything right, and they destroy everything in sight. They're a parody of every henchman from an '80s cartoon, and you're gonna love them. Here we have Hair Metal Doctor. Hair. Let's see. Hair Metal Doctor is a parody of Doctor Mindbender from GI Joe, a mad scientist. But my mad scientist has been crossed over with a rock musician because i think that's awesome watch he thinks of all the machines the scum dogs used to try and take over the universe but he also does it by being hair metal doctor and he looks well look at him looks cool don't you think now also we'll look at miss bristy melons miss bristy melons is another member of the scum dogs but well she only became a villain because she wanted to have fun she only became a villain to have a good time well, to have fun. Now, the hair metal doctor pinup, the Miss Bris and the Miss and the well, Miss Breasty Melons pinup will be included with other pinups in my graphic novel when you back it on Indiegogo. But I will also get these pinups out to you on t-shirts from crypto fashion as soon as I'm able to make them. Now we looked at my art and stuff like that. You get the idea. Let's go off and look at some uh, alien contactees. Like Dorothy is it. Why? Because, well, Dur Dustin Taninsky. Hey, buddy. Hey, Dustin. Hey, Dustin. Thanks for checking into the Scum Dogs Kennel. Tonight, we're going to be looking at, uh, as you see my uh, on my video, contact D alien contacted Dorothy Is it? We're going to be looking at various stories relating to her and stuff. Let's see. Take me down to Paratime City Part 1. Well, on this article right here, we'll be looking at it, at it and stuff like that. We'll also talk about other alien stories as well. Uh, but first, uh, but first, maybe go over to Indiegogo. Set Ethan Van Scaver's Cyber Frog exclusive blood, hun blood honey box. Collect your Cyber Frog comics and stuff like that. Looks has made seventy four thousand dollars already. Thirty days left. The Cyber Frog action figures has made four hundred sixty six two hundred one dollars. That's not too bad. Let's see if it's refresh that. Four hundred sixty one two hundred one dollars. That's pretty good. Let's see. Good looking art. Earthbound Part Two. Action Pack Conclusion to Earth to uh, the Earth, Earth Earthbound Part Two looks pretty good. We have Jack the Ripper Vampire Hunter and God Like the Romulus Saga has made one hundred nineteen thousand two hundred five over one hundred nineteen thousand. So that's also good. Hmm. All these look like great books. Let's go over here. Exclusive new magnetic star, star folio to collect your Cyberfrog comics. Blood, blood honey. Well, drained. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimate Blood Honey Silver Edition. $20. Not bad if you want a new copy of it. Ultimate Blood Honey. One of everything. You will see one of every item signed as well. Um, silver. Stuffed box set. One of everything. Let's see. Uh, Blood Honey all, Box. Ultimate Blood Honey Silver Edition. The Ultimate Blood Honey Ghost Edition. Blood Honey Drained Frog and Heather Eckett. Blood Honey Drained Salamandroid Eckett Edition. Plus the Secret Key on Frog Blood Honey Drained Standard Edition shipped to you in Sturdy Miller. Mm, not bad. Uh, Salamandroid Ace Edition. You also want a copy of Blood Honey Drained Salamandroid Acute Edition. Looks good as well. Uh, $25 for that. Other copies are $20, so this is also good. Come to a show sometime, Dustin. To one of your shows, I'll do that, Dustin, and stuff like that. 
if you if you uh, if I just have to look up your name on YouTube, I'll do that. As you can see, uh, Blood Honey here looks like a good looking book on Indiegogo. It's made seventy six thousand three hundred twenty three dollars. Here, it's just a a new edition of Blood Honey and stuff like that. So that's also good. And the artwork in these books looks well. The covers look great. I've read the I've read Blood Honey. You're going to enjoy this. I might back it too because my I my Blood Honey was already in a damaged edition, and I might want to get a pristine edition just to have. So yeah, that looks good. Cyberfrog, first wave Cyberfrog action figures, four hundred sixty six, two hundred one with twenty nine days left. Yeah, you can back these action figures for well. All of, almost all of them for forty dollars. Cyberfrog, modern Cyberfrog. Go to a local local concert. Hmm. All right. I don't think I can really afford that yet, but maybe I will one day. Now, Mar this forty dollars for that. Other action figures: the Heather Swan and the '90s Cyberfrog are forty dollars too. The sell the Vespids action fi action figure is seventy five dollars, but it, that's because it's bigger. All of them will come with swap out hands and heads and stuff like that and other other stuff. And they're fully articulated, so that's also good. You're getting well worth your money for this for these action figures. And well, it's got 29 days left on its and it's already made $466. Well, over four hundred four hundred and sixty-six dollars, and that's good. Well, four hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars. <laughs> so it's really gained up there. Let's take a look at these updates. Uh, we did. We're fine, my friends. I, I no, I guess no new updates. Let's go down to down here. Uh, let's see. Uh, other updates look good. Hmm. Yeah, this looks very good. Yeah, this uh, looks very good there. Now, let's go maybe look at Dorothy Itzitz. I have this article here, but maybe I should go over here first and give you an idea what we're looking at. Uh, the mystery of UFO repeaters, hundreds of amazing photographs, uh, maybe over here. Ah, Dorothy Itzitz case. The films of Dorothy Isid are giving us a Rosetta Stone of the paranormal, said writer and researcher Peter Gatilla, who made a riveting appearance on Monday right now. Gatilla, who had spent nearly 40 years investigating the unexplained, been studying the Isid case for the last eight years, which he has documented in the book Contact with, with, with Beings of Light, the amazing true story of Dorothy when it's that. All right. Just a moment, folks. Dorothy is, is the only contact that I can endorse, said Gotella, who, bosses the, who bases this judgment on the fact that she has proof. 600 reels of 8mm film that she has been shot since 1974. He said these films show an array of ETs, crafts, and light beings. A number of stills can be viewed here. And because they are on, on, on emulsion, they would be nearly impossible to fake. Now 81, a great-grandmother of living near Vancouver, has remained an obscure figure. Gotella hopes to bring more attention to her unique case and believes scientific testing of her process would violate her film's evidence. Gertilla suggests the light beings that Izzet has been in contact with are angelic in nature and among the myriad types of aliens she has encountered, sly aid, elfin ones, uh, over other creatures as well, over nine feet tall, of whom are benevolent. The abduction from sun syndrome he related to a lower order of life form that Izzet doesn't apparently communicate with. She did, however, tell Gertilla that creatures such as dog-faced men have been able to enter our world because of environmental tempering to the earth. Uh, created a breach between our world and the one next to it. For those who wish to, to view Dorothy and its films, a tentative screen is planned at the HM Space Center. Hmm, interesting. All right. Let's take a look at some of these, uh, of these stills, huh? Uh, just a moment, folks. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Let's go look at this. Uh, site can't be reached. I'm, there are other f things we can look at, folks. Uh, but you get the idea. D Dorothy Izzet has been for, well, years, basically making a bunch of 
taking taking photographs of alien beings that she says will appear only to her and stuff. Well, appears only to her, and basically no one can figure out the out the well not photo not just photographs but freaking eight millimeter film. She's filmed these creatures and they constantly appear to her. It's very interesting. Let's see. On November 9th, 1974, Richmond resident Dorothy Izzett, she woke at 4 a.m. and went to the window. She looked up to see a huge spaceship hovering in the sky with all sorts of smaller craft coming and going of it like little bugs. Alarmed, she phoned the Vancouver Airport Tower to report her sighting of an identified flying object, UFO. They told her nobody else had seen it. She tried to the newspapers and nobody else had seen it. She phoned radio hotliner Pat Burns, whose producer suggested she document the UFOs on film. So she went out and brought a Keystone two, well XL 200 Super 8 movies camera. Super 8? Started filming. 27 years later, she has 500 home movies. She says capture the strange phenomena. She sees most most everywhere she goes. Flashes of light, squiggly lines that look like neon spaghetti and round dealer, dealers that look like mini plants. Is it's UFO movies have brought her worldwide renown among those who believe we are not alone in the universe. She's been featured on TV shows like Unsolved Mysteries, Science, Strange Universe, Hard Copy, uh, Night at 7 p.m., uh, Space Center, she'll be showing her movies for local UFO buffs. Saturday, I'm going to show something special that she has never been out. Families of be beings, aliens getting on their ship. So is it? I call them light beings. I don't I don't call them aliens because we are aliens. Because huh. we are. Since her faithful 74 UFO sighting, 70-year-old is it, claims to have had almost, well, this is an older article, folks, have had almost daily contact with the light beings and their craft. There are all different types of beings, she explained. Some are like us. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference if they walked among us. Some are different. Down here on this earth, we are all different too. It all depends on where you come from and where you've been. The, at them, it's the same. I guess it depends on which planet or dimension they come from. Their skin color, hair, everything is different. I've met many, many different ones. She claims to communicate with extraterrestrial visitors. Uh. You talk mind to mind, she said. They can pick up your thoughts, and I have the ability to pick them up, too. She feels her own ability to see them as a result of having a special sense she possesses. I was born with it, she said. Parents have it, and my family all have it. My aunts and uncles all seem to have this second sight. People call it the sixth sense. At me, everyone has it. We're born with it. It's just some of us don't make use of it, and you lose it. She said hundreds of researchers from around the world have studied her to assertion what is going on in her films, but have come up empty. Uh-huh. Includes stills from her UFO movies, along with commentary from UFO experts who have met Is it? It's not like some kind of flicky, wishy-washy, woohoo phenomenon, should Mr. Lee Polos, clinical psychologist and paranormal researcher, will be one of several UFO experts speaking of Saturday night. Something's hit there, but we don't know what. I have no doubt that whatever she's experiencing is real, but the real question is, what is it? Incidentally, Sunday has been dubbed Worldwide International UFO Research Day, and if you spot a UFO that day, you can report, uh, which deals with all sorts of UFO phenomena. Is it herself? Does is in any part of any UFO group until she spotted the spacecraft in 1974. She was just a regular mother of four who worked at Eaton, Eaton's, the post office in Canada, manpower. Figured she had spent about 50000 making home movies on aliens and UFOs and carried over to the years when she wants to make contact. All she has to do is concentrate. Hmm. Oh, well, that's when she concentrates, they appear, huh? Oddly, some people can. Oddly, some people can see the aliens when she points them out. Others can't. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Oh, very interesting on what we just read there in that article. So you get the idea. Dorothy is it as a unique ability. Let's go over and read some of these articles. Take me down to Paradigm City. Mate, about with alien contactee. Oh. Yeah, I think alien, alien con Dorothy alien contactee will appear here as well. All right. Get the idea of what's going on with Dorothy. Is it? Let me get it up here. Uh, wait a minute. Has it already loaded? Ah, here we are. They say the third time's a charm. That certainly seemed to have been the case. The latest edition of Paradigm Symposium celebrated in Minneapolis from October 2nd to the 5th. The event was initially organized back in 2012 by my cosmic compadre, Mecca Hunks, and a good friend, Scotty Roberts. A bit of a tongue-in-cheek excuse to harness the apocalyptic elliptic, elliptic feel. 
was in the air prior to the rundown of the Mayan calendar. The idea eventually blossomed into a symposium of alternate history, mysteries, and paranormal phenomenon. Well, ancient history. Uh, ancient mysteries. Uh, paranormal phenomena do the soundings suggest they had on the first year Scott and Mecca to make, well, make it an annual conference. Even though they've had their share of mishaps, snafus, and crises, Paradigm has already established itself as a very unique gathering with a motto of bridging the gap between ancient knowledge and modern science, academics, and French researchers, skeptics, true believers, has been accomplished. Hmm. For myself, making the efforts of fine paradigm cities, etc. Stuck where I'm just going to go down here. Uh, let's see if we can't find Dorothy. Is it? Uh, don't see it. I was hoping for more information on her. Uh, uh da, da, da. let's see hmm looking down here hmm uh, i think if i just do this all right guess not did we pass her or something like that uh, I was trying to find more information. Ah, let me go look at uh, her uh, images and stuff. Ooh, here's some of the images that have been known for Dorothy Izzet. Up and for a bigger one. Oh, here's that. As you see, there seems to be a humanoid entity in it. Here, uh, how do you, is it story UFOs? Here's other images. Here's other, these are stills from her uh, movies. As you can see, they're very strange. There's another one. Uh, uh, right. There's this one. I should be not going too fast. As you can see, it's very strange what she picks up in her in her movies. Maybe we should look at her video. Well, I don't want to get copy flagged, but you, this really isn't giving us much to work on, is it? Let me go over here. Let me see this. Uh, videos. Film, aliens film through UFO plot, plot hole. Dorothy, is it? Uh, Dailymotion.com. I really don't want to. Want to? I really don't want to get a copyright strike over this. Don't know about that. But you should see Dorothy, Dorothy Ishid has basically been around for decades filming this stuff. She's been dead for a little bit. She died, I think, this year, sadly. But she, her films live on. But you get the idea. Dorothy Ishid has been watching this stuff and doing her best. The document what she's encountered, so there's that as well. Interesting. Very. Ooh. Maybe I should put on this. Contact D. Let's see. The alien contacted in his controversial UFO photos. Uh huh. Uh, Strange Adventures of UFO. Uh, this is contacting. A kind of case of UFO contactee. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Uh, let me go back over here. All right, like that. So we get this up here and stuff. Feel free to leave me a few chats, folks, because I love to hear from you guys. When just about all the UFO contactees were secretly spied on. Let's see if we can't find any information on her. Like this. Having to, the look at the FBI files, both George Amsky and Vin, George Van Tassel, I thought I would share with you the reasons why some of the other contexts of the 50s, 60s were secretly watched by government agencies. With began yet another FBI file on a certain friend of the Space Brothers, man George Hunt. And who knows that these people actually saw aliens? They could have basically been drugged by the government, and this is why they were being watched. Intriguing to note that, intriguing to 
Note that the primary reason why Williams didn't add a file on him was because he was suspected of smuggling ancient artifacts over the Mexico border and into the United States. Something like that is all but guaranteed to ensure a file will be open on you for a while. The FBI deeply pondered on whether or not they should get further involved in pursuit of a potential crime that has occurred outside of its jurisdiction in another country, Mexico, but finally dropped the matter. Rather fortunately, it must be said for Williams, and there was one... Particularly curious aspect of this particular affair, a number of relevant documents are heavily censored according to the category. One of the Freedom of Information Act, notably one covers nothing less than a matters that may have a potential effect on us. National security that strongly suggests there was something about Williamson that we still don't know. Hmm. Then there's the FBI file on Truman Brethren, the man who early 50s claimed to have met on more than a few occasions a hot alien baby known as R.R. Ra- Reigns. For why the FBI took so much interest in the Brethren, the answer is very simple. The government is already keeping tabs on Brethren. Uh, one particularly interesting reason he had made, con- well, that is interesting, folks. Do you think, uh, uh, do you think he was, uh, you know, uh, basically singled out to basically have his mind messed with with drugs and make him think they actually saw aura reigns or what because we were talked about that yesterday it just seems strange that they would have a file on the scale already but it would make sense as well if they wanted to use him mm. but very interesting uh matters of uh coming yeah communist nature of course he was onwards two of three fo- fellows who had sons in korea who read a lot in the newspapers about the communist underground country were convinced that their own minds that I was that I was of making contact with anyone at all, making it with enemy agents. They even went as so far as to tell me belligerently that they intended to get guns and follow me nights. And if they caught me having intercourse with any people from planes, airships, any kind, they'd blast me and, and those F people too. As an amusing aside, it's also led the FBI to refer to Aura Reigns and his files as a ravishing woman comm- commandant. The borough it seems, was infected by Earl's neglected hotness. Hmm. George King's, well, which was also very much a contact he's driven from the late 50s onward, was the subject of a secret file created by AIM, the, AIM, the UK police force called Special Branch. The file is now in the public domain thanks to the terms of the UK's Freedom of Information Act. file does not show that Special Branch was worried about alien Encounters whether the papers demonstrate that special branch was going to the fact that Arthur's society was aligning itself to the campaign for nuclear disarmament, which was disarmament in the 50s. Special, well, for in the 50s, special branch certainly viewed King as, in their words, a well, their words, crank. Special branch came to quickly realize King was highly motivated when it came to getting the world out, or, out regarding his views on nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons. Russians that alone were certainly a matter of deep concern to the authorities. The surveillance hardly surprising continued at a steady pace. A steady pace. A special branch do- document from '59 provides the following of the Earth is to say: Crusades for, for well, it crusades suspension of the H bomb tests and supports the campaign nuclear disarmament. It took part in what became known as well '58 Alden Mission March and holds t- public meetings. Hmm. From uh, uh, time to time, one was held on 23rd August 1959. 200 persons formed a quiet, amused audience. It was covered by Special Branch, and Special Branch eventually discontinued its, well, watching of the other society. The affair was finally over. Mm. Mm. Okay, so yeah, people were being watched, alien contactees, but you gotta understand is, do, do, do you think they could have possibly made a, made Dorothy is it see these creatures she was taking photos of these things while filming them and do you think the government would have the ability to do that possibly if they had the kind of technology but uh, honestly I have my doubts with that at least but I think it could happen with that they had the technology to make it that uh, to make make her make it them make aliens appear on her film so it could happen So it's very strange that, the, that Dorothy Izzet, for the last 50 years, years, has been taking photos. Do you think every alien contact or your person you've seen alien spacecraft are actually seeing something to do with the government? Possibly. 
But then again, there's so much film that she's taken that they'd have to have had to singled her out specifically for that. And have the technology to do it, which sometimes I have, I really do doubt the government could understand this kind of technology and use it. Hmm. But either way, it's hype. This is fun to read, isn't it, folks? Uh, we talked about that for a little bit. That's I'm trying to find some more uh, information on Dorothy. Is it? Let me go back over here and look at some more uh, pictures. Dorothy is it? Well, died like that. Uh, ah, let me get these pictures up here like that. Let me do this. Get this right here. All right. Uh, let me go back over here. Get that there. Feel free to leave me some more chats, folks, because I love to hear from you guys. Please go as well to, yeah, please go and, uh, uh, yeah, please hit that like button, will you, folks? It really helps me fit the algorithm so that more people can see my content. And the more people that see my content means my graphic novel, Scum Dogs, comes out the sooner. As well as hit that bell and hit the part of the bell that gives you all future notifications. And please go share this video out on Twitter, Facebook, and Gab. Let's look at some of these photos that she made. Well, some more of them. Hmm. Here's this. And these are just stills from our films. Eight and that she was filming for decades. Very interesting to look at. Uh. Uh. Maybe I should blow it up a bit. Not that good, actually, isn't it? Hmm. Let me go back over here. Do this. But what do you think, folks? Do you think that uh, Dorothy Izzet actually took these pictures of her, of these creatures? Do you know that they actually made a documentary about it saying, Reaching for the Light, I think? Let me look up that. Watch Chasing UFOs, Capturing the Light by Dorothy Izzet Phenomenon. You can go and basically rent it out on Amazon.com or buy it and stuff. And it basically talks about her phenomenon. In fact, they during the filming, they actually caught some of Dorothy Izzet's alien lights and and creatures out on film itself. Her her granddaughter has seen these creatures as well, these uh, lights. <sighs> it's all very interesting to consider that as well. Sorry about yawning there. I'm a bit tired, but I'm doing pretty well. We're having some fun looking at these various UFOs and stuff like that. I also was going to look at uh, uh, other stories as well. Uh, let's go over here, see if we can find some more stories. Uh, Profile and famous UFO contactee, huh? Hmm. Uh, I thought there'd be more information on this. But either way, yeah. Dorothy Izzet basically took these foes. Her family who at first didn't believe her and didn't see them, but now her granddaughter has seen it. And there's this film up during this capturing the light of Dorothy Izzet's is it there and is yeah, documentary on the woman Dorothy Izzet. Basically, where they ended up catching these creatures themselves, who were they filmed these creatures. So yeah, there is clear evidence that this stuff actually happened, and that is highly entertaining to think about. So, yeah, her family for at first doubted her, but now they see it too. So yeah, I guess it carries on in her family where they can see these things. So there's that to consider too. Let's see. Let me try this. Hmm, I thought there'd be more information. Hmm, let's try this. Oops. 
That's not too bad. I was hoping for more articles on her to find some more information. But I did say I was going to talk about other alien encounters too, folks. And I'll get to that. But I want to talk about Dorothy Is it a little bit more. And maybe go back and look at more of these photos. Ah, here's another article I've read. The mystery UFO appears, hundreds of midget photographs. They can they yeah, they they can't all be lying because of that. One of the most fascinating and difficult to analyze aspects of the UFO phenomena is the apparent non randomness of sayings and the effect of those sayings have on those who witness them. Often a long chain of events begins with this witness after after sighting events fraught with various synchronicities, time distortions, lingering newly discovered psi abilities like telepathy and psychokinesis. Which is very much what happens seems to happen with the UFO and alien, well, other well, well, other ghostly encounters and stuff like that, like ghosts and other things. Yeah, they seem to exhibit a lot of the same things that go with others. Hmm. Beginning with Kenneth Arnold's 1947 saying, a UFO encounter was considered to be something ancient and being struck by lightning. It was completely involuntary and extremely unlikely to happen. Summary second time, but as the contacting movements of the 50s began to gather strength, different understanding began to emerge. Some people claimed to have ongoing relationships with flying saucer occupants, and the other worldly interlopers were even willing to pose for a few photos as well. It's precisely that group within the UFO community that the new release from Timothy Green's Beckley's Communications Publishing House is concerned with the book is called UFO Repeater, Seen as Believing. The camera doesn't lie. As the title implies, it is a chock full of photos by people who were repeatedly given the upper yeah. Uh the the opportunity to take aim and shoot UFOs still in motion picture cameras. Many of the photos UFO appears are quite dramatic and illicit grasps of wonderment, even from people who are already jaded by years of studying the subject. No real attempt is being made in the made in the book to debate whether the photos well whether the photos are authentic. The late alien abduction research pioneer Bob Hawkins said that we will always have difficulty assessing the truth of a UFO photo because even one that one that Photo analysis could not completely debunk would still look like something conjured by Hollywood through the special effects department. Hopkins also said, all we can do is document them. Uh, let's see. Uh, do we really be sure of it? Or yeah, Hopkins also said all we can do to be sure of it ourselves means that we should study the UFO phenomenon to be picking up from the human end of the stick. Hmm. Interesting. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, all right, at the end of the stick. Yeah, all right. Let's get down to this. Interesting, isn't it? Which UFO repeaters also managed to accomplish, which when it tells the personal stories of several of the contactees themselves who have become sh shitterbugs for flying saucers, how and why these contactees were chosen for their mission or revealing the alien presence through the lens of the camera remains unknown, but some elusive factors and unites them all. Hmm. In this introduction, publisher author Bickley examples with a similar issue. For example, he writes in the visual, the UFO Peter is solely responsible for the image of the film or video. Do they possess some form of tracking device and implant that aliens are using as a horny apparatus to get in touch with their representatives? Are some of the images psychic in nature? Are they manifested by the repeater themselves? Hmm. Sort of like poltergeist events, or perhaps that's that's the local hot spot that draws UFOs in and anyone could be staring, could be standing in this location to capture weird images which are indisputably not anything within the realm of normal perhaps of the normal. Perhaps it is a combination of all the uh, yeah maybe it's a combination of it. Still a lensing. Let me go down here. 
Dorothy, ah, here we have Dorothy. Swartz also writes about a Canadian woman, Dorothy Izzet, who photographed an amazing array of UFOs, where it's so incredible that Dorothy's films are the one frame images pop up unexpectedly, storing streaks of light and other luminous objects. It all started when she saw a bright object covering the sky above her. Swartz writes Dorothy went out into a balcony with a flashlight and tried to signal the UFO to her mission as it signaled back. When she told her friends about the experience, no one believed her, so she went out and brought a he stone extra large 200 super 8 millimeter camera and start filming. The results were more than 600 reels of film that skeptics right, right from the very beginning have said were fake, but that if she is faking them, photo experts have yet to figure out how. That's another thing. They can't figure out how she's making this stuff. And, well, if she is making it, she'd have to have a knowledge of this stuff, and she doesn't know anything about film beyond, beyond basically taking photos. Hmm. Dorothy's films have been seen widely on television shows like, well, Unsolved Mysteries and Science. She calls the UFO convinced light beings. Yeah, not aliens, because we are. Uh, yeah, she calls them light beings. Interesting to think about as well. Uh, let's see. Dorothy said that from the very beginning, she could tell that when a UFO was near and that she would be compelled to get her camera and film them. She would later learn that she was being directed with telepathic communications from extraterrestrials. You took mine to mind. She explained they can pick up your thoughts and have the ability to pick up theirs too. There are all different types of beings. Some are like us. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They were... Hmm. Uh, they walked among us. Some of them are different. But down here on Earth... We are all different, too. Hmm. Oddly, some people call see the alien, can, can see the aliens when she points them out, but others can't. She feels her own ability to see them as a result of a special sense that she possesses. When she wants to make contact, all she does is concentrate, and they appear. Dorothy says that she was born with this sense and that she shares it with her all her members in her family. Hmm. Even though many UFO researchers try to ignore psychic components of UFO, Swartz writes the subjection of this key on what always contribute to the continuing confusion that surrounds the phenomenon since the 1940s. UFOs have become synonymous with spaceships, extraterrestrials. However, this interpretation is far too simplistic and probably reflects modern social belief structures more than science. Uh, Betty Hill and stuff like that, not bad. Let's look at some other contactees now, huh? Uh, Stella Lindsay, here's another person. Interesting. By the way, folks, hit that like button for me, will you? It really helps me fit the algorithm so more people can see my content. So please go and do that. As well as please go hit that bell. Yeah, hit that bell. As well as please hit the part of the bell that gives you all future notifications for my videos. And please go share this video out on Twitter, Facebook, and Gab. Mm. The veteran paranormal journalist Tom R. Swartz began in this book by getting down to the cases. For example, still, Lindsay Palmer, Massachusetts, had the strange ability to call down UFOs and photographs, them using both stills and film cameras. Many of the images were not apparent when still took the pictures, but instead seemed to spontaneously appear on film. She claimed to have experienced seeing strange little men and creatures hearing voices speaking out of nowhere, suffering electric shock administered by this shimmering figure. Hmm. And a craft surfacing from underwater. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. It was Beckley herself who gave Stella her first brush with fame when she came to a UFO. Well, gathering, Beckley helped organize in 67. She showed Beckley a series of film movies uh, that had captured what she called eerie. Fam, like a phenomenon. One of Stella's films seemed to take. Show show Farkham is visible through a window on the spacecraft. Other other eight millimeter films contain clock like patterns of light that would overlap the frame, something considered to be optically impossible. Still, type of experience the author Brad Sicker in his book Guy of Aquarius. Hmm. I don't know if they came from another planet. So I said, or if they live right within our dimension, or they're interdimensional, or maybe they're living somewhere on Earth that we haven't discovered yet. But whatever it is, I do, whatever it is, I do 
it's as if the program but this is mm, interesting uh, all right is it but whatever it is i do it's as it's as if I've been programmed in some way to sense the need to the, the pictures and UFOs. Interesting. Let me actually read that again. Uh, they're living somewhere on Earth that we haven't discovered yet, but whatever it is I do, it's as if I've been programmed in some way to sense the need to take pictures of UFOs. I feel like a sudden compulsion to take my camera. I sent an urgency to really grab the camera. I sense that maybe I'm told, but I don't even know. I'm not consciously aware. When I t snap the shutter, that's when I get my pictures, UFOs and UFOs and or entities. Something when I when I snap the shutter, that's when I get my pictures of UFOs or entities. That something is making me do do without my being aware of it. I'm only at. I'm only aware of it after it's happened. Interesting. Mm. Sorry if I'm a bit, snap, a bit tired of folks. As I say, I'm a bit tired. If I slur my words a bit. Stella continues to see and photograph UFOs as well as to keep detailed notes after her interest in her work had long since faded. She was always willing to talk about her experience outright up to her death and, death and stuff. She remained mystified by her own strange abilities. Now, that, that lesson, we always enjoyed telling her stories such as the ever popular TV series TV series. She lives in this clip available. She lives on in this clip, huh? Okay. Anyways, we talk about these guys. Maybe you should also go look at some other contactees or alien encounters now. All right. Let me go over here. All right. Very interesting. Very interesting. 46 minutes in. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's go over here. Update on underwater aliens reported by the National Geographic photographer. Let's take a look at this, huh? Uh, some alien contactees. In 2019, National Geographic and Oceans uh, X Underwater net photographer appeared in a video and said this. I think I'm in the ocean. Have uh, I have come across potentially bins from, well another world and that are more highly advanced than humans interesting photographer is Louis Lamar and the video appears to have been made by Ocean X and the Ocean Exploration Initiative whose website is described as a mission to explore the ocean and bring it back to the world does that mission include bringing photos of underwater aliens back to the world I've seen giant D. Uh, let me do that. I've seen giant D sea arachnids, venomous sea snakes, far off shore with like bright yellow heads, snorks and a frenzy orcas swimming all around me. Uh, sort you, you sort you know hyper advanced aquatic alien creatures and having the shallow waters, which almost look like stingrays. Hmm. According to Miko TV. Uh, you, a channel on YouTube. Lamar stated that he was waiting for an underwater film. He was stated, Lamar stated that he was waiting for an underwater film crew to assemble when he saw the sharks in a frenzy. When he approached them, he saw the, the hyper events of quiet gaming creatures. While he looked like stingers, Miko TV reporter said something. Said something. Something about them didn't feel like something that wasn't normal. The original. Mm, the original report and video was said to have been made by Warzone, which is well known for its in-depth reports of advanced military aircraft and strange encounters. In fact, 2019, it was the first report of U.S. Uh, on a U.S. nuclear submarine having a number of encounters with unidentified submerged objects or USOs. And that is where the plot thickens. The war zone has no record of Louis Lamar thanks to the original video, no longer work. Lamar is definitely a real person. National Geographic photographers' photos appear in 2019 story titled If Aliens Exist in Our Solar System, it may look like this. That may, however, the underwater alien encounter story is still alive, having popped up in various paranormal and UFO sites on the Reddit. This week on the on this week on the FBI Reddit, a follow-up on the story was alluded to uh, floated a folder, a tweet by filmmaker Stephen Bridges, who tweeted a post by Andrew 
Sims, a prayer experiencer who contacted Lucy Lamar and asked for a classification as a Karen lay of the recent UFO, USO encounter. This goes at the Pentagon. Hmm. Uh, some objects. Interesting. This was stupid. Jo I joke me video of my friend while we were bored on a shoot for kids on Instagram or whatever. It's a complete put f. It's complete BS. Stop wasting our time. Mm. Mm. This is why we can't have nice things like accurate and honest reports on UFOs. Some comment well on yes USOs. Some comments try to say it by saying that Lamar could have been pres pressured by the government to survive the video and remove it. But this sounds more like employees who may have been behind it. Oh, Lamar just got tired of being contacted by serious researchers about his joke video. These days, it's about his joke video. These days, it's hard to be a comedian or satirist or just plain old person trying to have some fun, especially when trying to joke about politics or world affairs is going to be the same with UFOs. Oh, crap. That's because they don't want to control everything. The people who... Uh, in the government want to control everything because they want to control the narrative because it, that gives them power, they think. But they can't control the UFOs. They appear anyway. Mm. So there's that as well to consider. But Dorothy Isid has seen various things, various very weird things, so that's also, right? Oh, uh, what to go with next? Mm. Let me go back over here and look at alien contactees again. All right. Alien contactees from contactees to abductees. Interesting. Thanks to the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act, but the United States and the United Kingdom, we both know complete certainty that various military intelligence agencies have opened secret files on countless people who have claimed to have encountered otherworldly beings. The evidence we the evidence we all know dates back to the early 1950s. That was when the Federal Bureau of Investigation quietly opened files on numerous people in the contactee field, including George, well, George Amsky, George Van Tassel, Alfred Angelica, uh, Truman Brotherham, uh, uh, yeah, of them and many more too came under the careful secret scrutiny of J. Edgar, uh, J. Hoover of Hoover and stuff. G. G. Men. The surveillance had very little to do with claim, claimed encounters of the the of the character, yeah, of of, of uh, aliens and stuff like that. But because a lot of them were, a lot of people were, 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 yeah, a lot of these. The FBI was worried that these, or a lot of people were worried that these people had contact with communists. What well, wasn't which was something they should do. So that's also there. Uh, the, uh, the characters above are just about everything to do with pro-Russian statements, some of the contactees, uh, well, of some of the contactees. Of course, con contactee experience didn't involve being abducted against their will. The most part, the so-called Space Brothers would live, would invite Makes people under their craft. Space Brothers were benevolent human looking figures who wanted nothing more than to help steer us away from worldwide nuclear destruction, the extinction of life on Earth. This is a stark contrast to what erupted all across the globe just a few years after the likes of Van Tassel and Amsky were riding high. Suddenly, government agencies were faced with another non human phenomenon, a very much un for seeing one. It was a phenomenon which concerned the government of both the United States and, and, the, and Britain, well, the United Kingdom. Hmm. All right. A stark and chilling realization hit the government agencies square in the, in the face. Strange creatures from far away worlds were kidnapping citizens as planet. People were being subjected to medical experience of, well, which puzzled those tasked with studying the situation. Memories were being wiped clean, and there was a new threat to national security. Forget the Russians. Sinister entities from from an entirely different realm of existence to ours, were using us like cattle. And in the very early days, when the Betty Burning Hill Saga, Betty Bar Hill Saga reached the media and the public, it seemed that nothing could be done to bring the onslaught to an end. 
Uh, not only were government agencies confused and vulnerable to the activities of the new gang, they were hit by a terrible realization that they were unable to do anything about the growing intrusion to our very midst. To our very... Yeah. In other words, the early years of the alien Enigma agencies were still very much in the dark, doing their utmost to come to grips with some of that that overwhelmingly baffled them. The military was used to dealing with enemies that wanted to destroy the US, us. United States government knew their, the Soviets were a major threat and they knew how to handle them, just the same way that the Soviets knew how to handle the Western world. Problem is, as we've seen through this, that the great abductees don't act like regular enemies. They didn't attack us. They didn't destroy our cities and Independence Day, Day, and they never landed in the White House lawn demand demand worldwide surrender. Rather, they acted in a stealthy and odd way, which agencies, particularly the military, had a hard time coming to grips with. It was no outright aggression, but there was no friendly approach either. So what did our leaders do? Agencies took what they felt was the best approach possible, maybe even the only approach possible, taking into consideration the fact that the aliens were infinitely years ahead of us in terms of science and technology, really was only one option available to the government. That was to watch, watch closely. What was going on? To keep the abductees under surveillance, to stay fully aware of the of the growing alien abduction ep epidemic, at least to the extent that they were able to, and to stand ready and prepare for any significant changes, clandestine action of the Greys or other aliens in general. Uh, how long? Oh, not that much longer. This is why the 1960s became the 70s. We saw the rise of the black helicopter, well, and phantom helicopters phenomenon. It was in early 1970s, st elements of the, well, yeah. The aircraft that people hear and basically can't, but, well, actually, the aircraft that, that people see but don't hear. And, uh, and I suppose UFOs themselves. Government secretly assigned a significant budget towards creating helicopter-based quick reaction teams that could rep respond to alien abduction events and monitor homes of abductees across the United States. Uh, homes of abductees. Uh, the, well, abductees. Uh, 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 huh. Project even used those same helicopters to try and figure out the connection between abductions and the cattle mutilation phenomenon. Uh, could be. That's what, the, that's what this article says, but it could be that the black helicopters are part of the cattle mutilation phenomenon and that they're basically what they're actually doing is basically collecting the meat from cattle, uh, cattle because they are basically trying to test for what happens because of the, well, increased radiation in the atmosphere due to nuclear testing. That could be as well. If those use try it like that, uh, that encounters involving alien abductees and those mysterious helicopters are still being reported. Very good indication of this particular kind of aerial surveillance very much is, is still very much going on. Let's... No, let's not forget that there's even a stranger aspect to all. Let's not forget that there is even a stranger aspect to all of this. Is that the well controversy we're talking about? Military-based abduction teams fabricating abduction events as a trauma-filled Charles Hickson, Caliber Parker, Charles Hickson, later late one night on October seventy-three in Mississippi to try and place the aliens in an even more dangerous light. They already seem to be, be or in the Brazilian affair, or the Brazilian affair. To make it whole abduction issues appear utterly ridiculous by bringing the issue of wild, of wild alien, alien human sex into the equation, many researchers of the UFO issue outright dismiss the visual, the villas, the, dismiss the totally, uh, the, yeah, yeah, more dangerous, yeah, they, yeah, I can buy that they would basically use these helicopters to try and make people, well, look at, make people look bizarre. By basically either basically ma making the aliens look more dangerous so that they can use them for political reasons or trying to basically make people look ridiculous by introducing other elements. You know, like like they say how they all, the MIB will act like like other uh, will act like utter weirdos basically because anyone trying to describe them will themselves sound like an utter weirdo when they're basically describing what the MIB act like. Think about it. Great disguise. You have a guy that a guy in a black suit with a with a who looks odd, then he acts weird, and when that person basically tries to describe that person, they sound weird themselves. Any other elements to basically make people think that the person who has experienced this is doesn't know what he's talking about, make them look weird. 
That's very good as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, make the whole abduction issue appear utterly ridiculous by the issue of that. Uh, when it was, uh, which was exactly what the government wanted to keep ufologists from investigating the real abductions by trying to convince those some same ufologists that all of the tales of alien abduction and sex with extraterrestrials were ludicrous, and well, just weren't real. That has also happened and stuff. Yeah, it's also stuff. Uh, basically, with UFO abductions and stuff like that, uh, but there's stuff like others who've actually been contacted by aliens and stuff that they can't basically, well, they can't basically make those people look weird because their stories are too solid, and no matter what, they can't make prove that the what they were, saw basically was fake. That is true too, but it could be that the government is making people see these various things, and they have ways to do that. No one knows for sure, but this stuff does happen. UFOs do exist, they have been seen, and they keep being seen, but we don't know what exactly they really are. That is quite true. Now, folks, please go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Read comics that are bad for you, okay? Uh, make sure you are still subscribed. The there is misspelled in my title. Read comics that are bad for you. It's T-H. It's, yeah, the there in my title is misspelled. It's, and read comics that are bad for you. The there is T-H-E-R-E. Uh, leave some comments down below because I love to hear from you guys. Please go uh, share this video on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, hit that bell and hit the part of the bell that gives you all future notifications. Uh, let's see this. Also, please go over and subscribe to Stitch Together Picks. Stitch Together Picks is a YouTube channel that deserves far more subscribers. It's hosted by the Maniacal Cinephile. You're going to love his reviews of movies. Stitch Together Picks is a great channel. The And the character who plays the Maniacal Cinephile is just funny as hell. Go and subscribe to Stitch Together Picks, as well as go over and subscribe to Creepy Little Book. Creepy Little Book is like the Art Bell radio show. He does little videos talking about high strangeness, but he also little videos talking about high strangeness. But he also does live streams every night. On weekdays, he live streams at twelve thirty a.m. and on weekends, he live streams at ten o'clock p.m. Uh, go and subscribe to Creepy Little Book. Also. Remember, folks, I'll be back again tomorrow around 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock or 11 o'clock p.m. for another live stream, so be sure to come back again then. I'm Chris Williams from the Scum Dogs Kennel. Thank you all for joining.